very quietly uh, um, unethical in my view. Now, oh, I've heard people well, say that the... Yes, very unethical. It, it's not good, and, and I'm saying this because I have here with me, and of course I've read uh, the act that uh, created the Local Content Development Board. Now, yes. if you take a very um, clear look at the act, you realize that beyond the fact that the, the executive secretary is, uh, the, the, do, does the day-to-day -day running of the board, there are certain yes. clauses or sections in this law that gives ample powers to the Honorable Minister of State in his position of steed as the chairman of the Governing Council. And I'd like to uh, uh, just uh, make a few uh, readings from the law so that we can be very clear as to uh, the, the, the position or the legitimacy with which the Honorable Minister of Petroleum acted. Now, if you look at Section 75, it says the Council shall have powers to manage and superintend the affairs of the board, make rules and regulations for the proper functioning of the board. Now, I've just read you a direct representation of what is in the law. And having said that, let me also take the opportunity to read the minister's correspondence to the executive secretary. And maybe there's also need for me at this point to shed a little background on why all this is happening. And the letter which I have here, which was signed by the Honorable Minister of State in his position as chairman of the governing council. Let me read the first two paragraphs. It said, of, it of which the executive secretary, sorry, sir, of which the executive this is secretary the is also a member. Yes, he's, he's a secretary of the council. That's right. Yeah. Now, this is the letter he wrote. Uh, reference personnel announcement. The personnel announcement signed by the Executive Secretary NCDMB dated 4th March 2004 with reference number NCDMB ES slash 1 slash 001 slash 03 slash 24 redeploying some management staff of the board refers. Mm -hmm. It has become imperative to emphatically state that the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry Content Act 2010 does not empower the Executive Secretary to redeploy or appoint management staff Section 812B of the Act states that the Executive Secretary is responsible to the Council, and this is a direct representation of the Act of the Council for the execution of the policies and the administration of the daily affairs of the Board. The ES, therefore, does not have the power to redeploy, appoint, or employ management staff. Accordingly, the Executive Secretary does not have the authority to overturn deployments or redeployments made by the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and the, cha and, and the Chairman of the Governing Council of the Board. Three, furthermore, Section 101 of the Act states that the Minister shall make regulations generally for the purpose of carrying out or giving effect to the provisions of the Act. The Executive Secretary is strongly advised not to unsub the powers of the Governing Council on any subject matter. In the light of the above, the redeployments announced by the Executive Secretary to all staff on the 4th of March 2024 is hereby overturned. Consequently, all affected staff should remain in their place of assignment as status quo remains. Please be guided, sign the Honorable Minister. Now, the question to ask at this point is, what is wrong in this correspondence that was sent to Executive Secretary? Okay, the but, but before, of the you law, go, sir, but before you go, sir, before yes. you go, sir, uh, thank you very much for you know, reading that selection out. Um, you see, the um, uh, Nigerian Content Development Board, um, uh, the executive secretary is the chief executive, is he not, of that particular... There's, there's, no, there's, no dispute. there's no dispute, but I've just also read to you where it is clearly stated in Section 75, the council, which is the minister himself sharing the council and other members, shall have powers to A, manage and superintend the affairs of the board. What, is the, what are the affairs of the board? In the letter, he also copiously quoted another section that empowers him to do what he's doing. Okay. It is the then, view of the framers of the law. Just a minute, just a minute. It is the view of the framers of this act that there could be a situation like this that an executive secretary could either act ultra vice or outside his powers. And therefore, there's need to make clear regulations as to what he can do and what he cannot do. Now, if the executive uh, secretary, in his wisdom, had written yeah. sought consent of the governing board before it takes these decisions, I'm sure there will be no end of this crisis. What the minister simply did was to carry out his function as chairman of okay. the governing council to say, uh, sir, can you just stop a bit, revert back to the council, let us look at this, let us deliberate, and let us give you the necessary approval that you need for you to carry out this assignment. What is wrong in this act? 
okay. I, 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 thank you very much. I, I hear you, but there are a lot of people, perhaps um, you speaking as a lawyer and also an insider, um, you, 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 I, in the course of the time we have, you probably explain it a bit more. But I made reference to the fact, and you said, yes, it is so, uh, that he's the chief executive. He knows the place even better than the minister. Um, the minister doesn't have to be an expert in his field. That's not what ministers do. The ministers have the power to superintend and all of that. So I'm, I'm wondering, and perhaps you can clarify for us, what is the interest of the minister uh, to reverse an order of the executive secretary? I've heard what you've explained, but what is, what would, be, because the minister wouldn't do that if he didn't think that anything was um, affected. What is, the, what is the interest of the minister? Is the curious, if you want, the simplistic uh, kind of question that somebody might ask? The, the interest of the minister, I think it's, it's very obvious from uh, the caption of the letter. Uh, it will interest you to know that on the, uh, immediately the executive secretary made these deployments. There were operas within the office in Yanagua. I'm sure uh, you must have heard this from other sources. Now, not only that, are you also aware that arising from this development that uh, caught between the minister and the executive secretary, the local Pengerson Union attempted to shut down the entire uh, operations of the office. Their reason is that this is affecting them on one side and on the fact that the action of the executive secretary, beyond the fact that the contravenes extant provisions of the Local Content Act, goes against civil service regulations. The people that were appointed to make head of uh, different decks or directorates, they are people who are their far senior. And so there was rumblings. So the question is, should the Honorable Minister, in his position and wisdom as Chairman of the Governing Council, shut his eyes from a situation that will affect the implementation or the achieving of the very noble objectives of this local content? But this is the question reasonable Nigerians should be asking. What if, in the course of his silence in relegating or declining to carry out his function, there is a serious industrial crisis in the local content uh, board? In any case, let us even assume that that does not happen. What is the place of seniority in governance? I thought that this is a very explicit position within the civil service where seniority is given its impetus or its place. So the idea of picking people who are not senior to you to come and take over functions as head, in my view, could spell a lot of doom for the office. And so the minister okay. acted justly. He acted timely. Okay, so uh, maybe there's a clue in what you've just said. Uh, it, it was the uh, uh, concern, let me, let me not say fear, it was the concern of the uh, Honorable Minister, as you seem to have indicated, that um, the uh, postings, redeployments, whatever that the Executive Secretary had done would actually compromise its uh, efficiency and effectiveness and smooth running. That seems to be what I'm getting from you. And what, the, what, what I just, you know, don't seem to understand there is that why a man of such experience uh, would go ahead and sabotage an op operation on which, uh, over which he superintends. I take entirely what you've explained that, look, if it comes to power, depending on how you interpret it, if it comes to where does the power lie, uh, the final word, um, yeah, it's clear, it's clear, the minister perhaps. But I did make the point that it's not usual for ministers to go into the day-to-day -day running uh, of these uh, people, y yes. and then reversing, reversing what has been done. C can I say something again? Yes, um, I'd like to read for you again another, another section. This is uh, section 100 in the law. It says, the minister may issue to the board directives in relation to the Nigerian content development with respect to the application, administration, and implementation of this act. Again, this is another clause, another section that gives a lot of powers to the minister. Now, you have asked this question. It's a little bit out of the norm uh, to see a minister intervening directly in the day-to-day -day affair. It is so, one, like I pointed out clearly, is because the heart itself gives him that power to do so. Okay? That, that, that's that's the, the very essence why the governing council in the very first place was constituted. It is a bit not normal because perhaps, and I'm not saying this to disrespect any other minister, perhaps, some have just allowed them to run things without necessarily taking a scrutiny at their books, the regulations, and what are the place, the steps they could take 
and the powers they do not have. And so, when a minister does this, to some people this is strange. It's not strange. The law itself was created for situations like this. And so what it did is to meet the very expectations of the law to say that every time, at every point, the governing council must be involved in the management and in the affairs of this board to ensure that the target objective is met and not to allow any actions that may compromise the, the overall objective. And that is exactly what the minister has done. In my view, there is nothing strange. If the governing council was not important in those who came up with the idea of creating the local content board and putting regulations that will ensure its smooth operation, I'm sure there would have been no need for a governing council. And let me also say this. If you take uh, a comparative study of other agencies and the laws that regulate them, you realize that that of the local content is quite distinct. It's very distinct, perhaps in my view, from a legal standpoint, because of the very objective in trying to develop our local content. They have gone yeah. a little bit, put some far-reaching powers on the governing council. For example, it will interest you to note that the local content cannot spend certain amount of money without them. It's stated clearly in the law. Of you course. must get of approvals. Now, in yeah. terms of both remuneration, in terms of both employment, promotion, the law is very clearly stated here that you must revert back to the, 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 the governing council. And so one begins to wonder at this point, why didn't the executive secretary, who has been in the oil industry for quite some time, and I, and I respect him with the beautiful CV and experiences, what he needed to do was to look at the laws. If the law says that for you to make these deployments, you must revert yeah. back and get the express approval of the board, there's, there's, there's not, it's not so big to do. You are All also right. the secretary yep. of this same governing council. Sorry, the council. He's the secretary of the council. So what he needs to do is to follow the, 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 the procedure that has been uh, entrenched before his uh, appointment and do the same okay. thing and get the, the, the express uh, approval. So I say to you, if he had taken that route, I'm sure there would have been no need for all this ulabaloos about what is happening, what is the minister doing. Again, like I've always submitted, and I will re-emphasize it, the minister acted wisely. He acted within the confines of his power as clearly written and given to him under the act. So there's nothing very right. strange. What is strange is that this, this minister has gone uh, very proactive to ensure that he carries out his duties very effectively and efficiently. Okay, one moment. Let me bring on our first caller um, uh, this morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. George. Go ahead, please. Uncle Yari, good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Uncle Yari, I'm taken aback by some of the arguments I'm hearing from your guests. The civil service in Nigeria is guided by one rule. The rule is applicable to all the parameters of government. The minister is supervising the ministry that has parasita. Each parasita has its chief executive. Administrative management of each parasita rests with the executive secretary in this case of the board or the head of that parasita. There is nowhere that I know where a minister is the one to decide how, who should be posted to one department or who should be removed from one department to the other, when there is a chief executive of that parasita. If the law or the act setting up that content board needs the minister to have such powers, then that law has moved and must be reamended. All right. What I am hearing from the lawyer is very strange. He says the board is chaired by the minister, the content board is chaired by the minister, and, that the, and, and the minister has a right to overrule whatever the executive secretary has done. When the minister, when the executive secretary uh, posted some people, the, the content board meets where the minister as chairman took a decision that whatever, uh, that thing that the executive secretary did is wrong and should be reversed. Did the board need to take that decision? Obviously oh, not. Okay, Mr. George, I, I think your, your, your point has been made, and um, I, I'd want Mr. Wukwele to um, react to it if he wishes. I, I, I think the, 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 the guests on the other side may, may be misunderstanding the facts. As rightly stated from the very beginning of this session, I did say there is no dispute as to the position 
of the executive secretary as the head and runs the daily affairs of the, 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 the board. But I did also mention that in line with the, the practice directive as contained clearly or the regulations in the act, the minister in his position as chairman of the council has powers to do so. Now what I expect him to ask, in the past, hasn't the local content referred issues to the board, to, to the governing council and got approvals for them to take decision? The answer is emphatically yes. This is not the first governing council. We had a governing council with Silva, the uh, a former governor of Biosu State, as chairman of the council. What the law simply envisaged and states is very clear and is unambiguous. When you are taking certain actions where the statute is clearly written, you must revert to the governing council. What is wrong in that law? I have okay. also stated here, just like he agreed, that there are a lot of powers given to the governing council. So if there are issues with the law, the proper thing is to go and uh, make the amendment. But what, what is undisputed is that the minister did not act outside his powers. He did exactly well, well, that, what that, he, he said the that law. Is what some people are, that, that is the, the, that he is asked the, the man to reverse and follow the due process. There is nothing wrong in asking the executive secretary to follow due process. Okay. Uh, now, as, as the, uh, that contributor, that viewer said, there will be a number of parastatals agencies under a, mini, a given ministry. Uh, and in this case, even the minister uh, uh, that we're speaking about now. Um, w is it going to take the time to be x-raying every last day-to-day -day operation within all of those boards? Many people feel that clearly not. He doesn't have time. He has, he has bigger fish to fry, uh, is the thinking. So what is it about this particular ministry that is coming in this way that uh, a lot of people, just like the one who just finished speaking, say that this is strange to him. And as you yourself know, it's become a raging debate. But you have explained to us that ah, the minister is just seeking to keep to the letter and the spirit of the law. That's what you are saying. But he can't do that as effectively and efficiently in all of the board, boards under him is what I would suggest for your consideration. Yeah, but, but let me ask you, how many of these boards under his uh, leadership as chairman of governing council having such internal issues? Like we have rightly agreed, myself, yourself, and the other guests, that the executive secretary runs the day-to-day. -day. However, he has limits to the exercise of these powers. Now, if the other boards, that the honorable minister is chairman of their governing councils, are going smoothly, because it was not an error for the freemans of the law to put the minister as chairman of the governing council. If there was no need, if there was no very compelling need, I'm sure there would have been no governing council. And so as the chairman of the governing council, he must put an eye on the activities of uh, all the parastatals. He may not have, like you rightly said, because of uh, the number of issues that he has to contend with as the Honorable Minister of Petroleum. But that does not effectively remove him as chairman or stop him from carrying out his duties where the, 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 the necessity has become very persuasive. And so the issue yeah. of that his hands are full, that he should not, I mean, it's not, it's not a proper way to look at it. What is proper is that the man has carried out his function. And if the other agencies under his supervision are going on smoothly, does he have to raise the letter when there are no issues? And as In you the know, past, there are those... have we heard him raise letters? He hasn't okay. done that. He only did this because some of the workers had also complained. Some had brought issues before him that you need to intervene. Assuming you are in this studio here and you hear that the, NC, the local content, there's a big crisis because workers have started rioting that they have brought people who are their five juniors that are not their seniors to superintend and they are not going to accept it because this goes against extant labor laws or provisions. Is the minister in his capacity as chairman of the governing council because his hands are full, should allow the situation to escalate? I think if you look deeply at these issues, except there are some other contending objectives that we do not see, I think it's very apparent that the minister acted dutifully and should be commended. What I think that the executive secretary need to do, they are in the same, uh, they are part of one big family. It's a very simple thing. You have asked me to reverse. If the law says so, you reverse, and then you go back to him. I have been given but, powers to do a daily but the running of this office, so please, this is I, what I, I want. I, I, uh, Mr. Wokwele, I, I hear everything that you said, and indeed I understand it to the extent that limiting myself to what you have professed on this program. 
Um, but uh, undercutting the chief executive of any of the parastatals under you, um, I, I don't know, the, the very um, smooth governance and smooth running that seems to be the minister's concern, according to you, uh, for him stepping in in a manner that is unusual, but you have explained that it, the fact that it is unusual uh, doesn't mean that the right doesn't exist. Um, uh, surely that can't be, lead, uh, that can't be working towards the progress and smooth running of the place. Uh, what, 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 the executive secretary is, he has been undermined. I, that's why I started off by saying, what's the minister's interest? I, I think what you've just said before I started speaking would be the minister's interest. The effective and efficient and good running and smooth operation of the place. Uh, but, but, I, but I was suggesting that why would the executive secretary sabotage himself and his own operation by doing anything uh, toward? No, but let me bring in, uh, I think Sonny in Lokoja, did I get that right? Sonny in Lokoja, yeah, you yeah, want to come yeah. in? Yes, yeah, Sonny from Lokoja. Okay, please go ahead, sir, quickly. Yeah, please, I want to say that um, your guess is actually misleading. No. You see, the minister, hello, are you listening? We can hear you. Yes, the guest is actually, your guest is actually misleading us. Now, the minister is equating the minister with the governing council. The minister is not the governing council. The minister is just the chairman of the governing council. No, he is. Mm. So, he, so he, he is the governing council. He, he, he cannot single-handedly write to overturn what the executive secretary has done. The executive secretary is the secretary of the council. Is he saying that the, the decision that the minister has conveyed is the decision of the board? That is not the decision of the board. Okay, the but, but I do believe that the minister, the minister by virtue of his position, is the chairman of the governing that council. That decision rests mm -hmm. on, the, on the executive secretary and not the minister. What the minister has done is simply, you know, uh, overusing his power. Okay. The power, he's even using the power that he has not, has not, he doesn't have. There are those who feel what you have just said, but as to the fact of whether or not he is the chairman of the governing council, would you like to uh, speak on that, Mr. Wokwele? I, I think that the, the, the contributor is uh, it's actually uh, very wrong. If the well, minister I, takes a, 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 a preemptive, I'm coming now, if the minister takes a preemptive step, to, to save uh, the, the sanctity and to ensure that there's peace in that office. He acted in his position as chairman of governing council. And I'd like to see, if the, how does the governing council express his powers? In every organization, there must be an head. If the local content takes a decision in terms of daily uh, running of the, uh, of the office, who gives the directives? Is it not the executive secretary? Even if there are sectional heads, that may have formulated this decision and bring to its attention when they sent out. How, who, who, does, who does the uh, the signing? And so to say that the minister is overstepping his bounds, I, I don't think it's correct. I have read very copiously for you from the laws, yeah. let, so that yeah. you can be clearly guided that these are not decisions he's taking outside his, uh, his purview of power as enshrined on the governing council. The, the chairman of the governing council expresses the position of the governing council. And I'm sure in the days to come, there must, be, there must be a meeting and the governing council will take a decision. Nobody is disputing. Again, I say nobody is disputing the fact that the executive secretary is the head of the, 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 the local content and has the powers to do the daily running. However, just like the president of this country, whatever decisions and actions we are taking for the smooth implementation of decisions must be guided by certain extant laws. And where they are foul, in the same way the National Assembly can actually say, Mr. President, I think in this one you are going to beat against the law, is what exactly the governing council is there for. And so there's, nothing, there's no need to say that the man does not have the power or is, 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 is overstepping his bounds. I have read so, from the law. If there is a those, counter law, he should provide the law. Simple. Okay, so, so, so I hear you, sir. So and, those, and before, 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 before you respond, have you also seen the letter that was written by the Penguins, like I mentioned earlier, to the effect that they wanted to shut down operations. Is anybody talking about that reality until the Penguins National had to intervene? If there were no contending issues that could lead to breakdown or create an unnecessary uproar, would the local Penguins chapter also raise, take a resolution in Congress? You know, I you, think you that said we need to be. You, you said when this 
question was first of all aired and debated uh, on our station, on a different program. Uh, you, you had felt a sense of uh, uh, injury. You, uh, you had even gone as far as saying, uh, uh, perish the thought for TVC, but that uh, unethical. We go out of our way not to do anything unethical. Um, so what exactly was no, the no, I wasn't referring. No, I wasn't referring to you. I wasn't referring to you. I have watched the, the program. I was referring to the guests that appeared on the program. Oh, okay. Let, let, me, let okay. me quote exactly what they said. One said, the actions of the, 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 the Honorable Minister of Petroleum is executive recklessness. In your program, you may wish to go back and check the video and uh, uh, fact check me if I said okay. wrong. Another I went as far as okay. saying yes. that the minister... Okay. Yes, okay. opinion of the guest, and that's what I refer to. I did not refer to your own uh, responsible Speak. act in allowing the public okay. to uh, debate uh, okay. and see what is right or wrong. No. Okay. Uh, but, but in relation to the last gentleman who called in, uh, but the chairman is, I mean, the minister is the chairman uh, of, of the council, isn't he? Because that gentleman was saying yes, that... Yes, um, he's the chairman. He's the chairman. It, it's here in the law. You may wish to also get the law so you I can, you can see if what I'm reading for you is wrong. He is the chairman of the governing council. I might not have been He's aware of that. explicitly stated. But he was... Most probably, most probably. Yes. Uh, so, but he was speaking more about the... Because we're in a, in a democratic era and um, there are those who felt that... Um, well, you said the word recklessly was used by a viewer, I mean by a contributor to the program. Um, they, they, they were using those kind of words. And um, it's probably because maybe they tend to look at everything from a democratic point of view. And I don't know if somehow the, 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 the semblance of the opposite of that, where the minister can just wade in and say, no, it's not going to be like that. You've explained it, but people are still aghast and uh, shocked. You are aware, sir, are you not, that um, there are those who have you know, uh, called on the president to uh, step in and rein in, and you don't rein in somebody who is not uh, using power in a concerning way. He has been, uh, the president has been asked to rein in uh, the Honorable uh, Minister of State. So it, it goes to show you that there is a lot of concern uh, over the action that the minister has taken, even as you have tried to explain uh, the reasoning behind it. So you are aware that it doesn't go down very well in the public space. I think that you have just rightly said this is democracy. There is a, 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 a platitude of uh, opinions when actions like this are taken. But I, I did also mention uh, at the very beginning of this program that uh, perhaps because in time past issues like this have not come or have not been in a national space, this may be the reason why people react to, to ask questions. For example, you just heard a caller who mentioned clearly that the minister is not even chairman of the governing council. So most people are not even aware of the specific positions of the law as cast in the act that is the content office. And so they could express these opinions because to most of them who are not knowledgeable of the operations as well as the law guiding the operations and, uh, of that office could actually think that, what is the minister doing? We have the executive secretary who is the chief executive uh, officer that does the run, day to day running of the, of the board. Is okay. it not going wrong? All right. you, you these, are, these, are normal, these are normal expressions. But when you are fixed with the facts, we are fixed with the extant law, you will be persuaded to change because I'm not reading from the blues. I'm sure you, you, over the, uh, the last few days, you would have also done the research to see some of these laws. And I'm quoting directly from the law. And it's the law that guides these operations. And so we cannot act outside the operations. It All was right, a cautious well, uh, uh, attempt to ensure that there was no issue. So, well, uh, Mr. Owekwele, Mr. Jeremiah Owekwele, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm Thank you for making yourself available. Uh, you felt a sense of grievance, maybe on behalf of the minister. Uh, but we've given you, you know, the opportunity, as it were, to respond to it, and you have uh, done so. Thank you very much for coming along and shedding more light on it. We're going Thank to have you. to take. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Oh. Thank you. I'm a stakeholder. All right. I'm there to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.
So uh, we'll take a break. Uh, don't go anywhere, please. We'll be right back and we have another subject to discuss. Good day on Business Nigeria. We uncover the secrets of the financial world. Breaking down intricate economic and financial matters. We analyze the stock market, shares, bonds, and the thrilling world of cryptocurrencies. We unveil and analyze complex policies of the CDN and other governments parasitical as they affect your everyday life, keeping you a step ahead every time. Okay, okay. This is the middle. Facts matter. Our team dives deep to separate facts from popular opinion. We simplify complex government policies as it impacts your everyday life, helping you navigate the ever-changing financial landscape. Watch Business Nigeria every weekday at 2 p.m. only on TVC News. First, with breaking news. Sometimes, it's the story the calls. At other times, the people just want to be heard. Their voices were echoing through time itself. We haven't done anything. If the, the tide is high, everybody run for safety. Their tears leave a sweet sour taste for all. Their demands, a familiar call beckoning for change. In our world, no one expects a disaster to happen. But when it does, we'll be there to x-ray all sides, from the east to the west, north and south. Community Forum will examine the oddities and challenges to economic development, as well as issues yearning for government intervention. Watch fresh episodes of Community Forum on Sundays by 9.30 p.m. only on TVC News. Okay then, uh, thank you for staying with us. Uh, let's move on to the second subject that I said we would air this morning. And uh, we're moving across to Edo State to look at the politics there. Um, the, you know, the contest for you know, the candidates uh, is over. Uh, and our guest this morning is an APC chieftain, Comrade Bello Osaretin. And um, he's chairman of Edo Voters Movement and also chairperson of the Edo Political Round table. Uh, good morning to you, comrade. Good, good morning, Uncle Folari. Oh, you're very kind, sir. Yuri, uh, thank you very much. Now, we are in the political season. I think the last time we, was, we, we, we were speaking on this program and on this subject matter, there was still the outstanding matter of um, a running mate. Work was in progress at the time. Now, how closer are we to finding a running mate for the uh, winner of the primaries to represent APC in the elections? Uh, good morning, Uncle Yori Folari. Uh, Thank you it very is not. It is not how, as I speak to you today, there is already there is already a running mate to the oh, candidate of APC. Yeah, so they are not in the search. It has been achieved. The Dennis Idahosa has been nominated as the running mate to Senator Monde Opewolu. That is it. that is the breaking news. However, some of us were taking 
by surprise by that development. Uh, also, trying to look at the trying to look at the processes that led to the nomination of Honorable Dennis Idausa. Though one was crabby to party supremacy. But however, in a process of that nature, in a, in a conference of that nature, we expect a former governor of a do state, His Excellency uh, Odige Oyegu, to be in such meeting. And of course, people like uh, uh, Ize Iyamu to be in that meeting. And Honorable E.J. Agmonaima to also be in that meeting. So it was surprised to us that this high-profile Poliko Mercuria that has domain were not invited in that meeting. And of to, to some extent, Francis Inegbineki was not in that meeting, a vice chairman of the party in the state. Uh, Patrick Iharale, a honorable member, was not in that meeting. Honorable Iguma was not in that meeting. Uh, Mr. Ernest Afolabi was not in that meeting. So one would wonder, how do we arrive at the consensus that led to the nomination of Honorable Tennis Idausa. Though I'm not here to question that. One was ascribe me to party, party supremacy. Yes, so, so if you're not here to, to your question that, what then is the issue that you want to air? Because I, I describe you as an APC chieftain. Uh, are you not happy with it when your party unveiled last night that uh, it was uh, Honorable uh, Dennis Idahosa that was going to be the running mate? Uh, Yori, in a town where there are elders, it will be very difficult for the ego, for the vulture to land. A, a couple of weeks ago, I was here. You personally observed that there is need to create an enabling platform for all to be on the table so that the party can work as one. Were you not surprised that I mentioned that his Excellency John Odige Oyegu, a former super secretary, a former chairman of a national chairman of APC, a former governor of a do state, and of course, an Eda statement, a member, in, a, a indefatigable member of APC, is not in that meeting that led to the nomination of, of uh, Honorable Dennis Idausa from a do south. So one would wonder, but I'm not trying to question. It's an observation, a personal observation. That is my observation, uh, my brother. It's an observation, but um, you don't... I, I wanted to be sure. Do you have an issue with Honorable Idahosa as the running mate uh, on a, on, uh, from a point of view of the quality of it? He's from your party. He's clearly uh, you know, uh, qualified. Um, your party, no less. Uh, you talked about party supremacy has decided on him. Uh, so your, 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 your point seems to be that, well, there were some people that should have been at the meeting that were not there, and you don't think, um, you, you, you just think that your party could have done better in that regard. Uh, I've already congratulated the uh, Honorable Desi Idausa. Idausa. Yeah. I, no, don't I, have don't... I don't have anything against. I don't have anything against him. I'm only expressing certain concerns in certain quarter. Mark, you introduced me as as chairman at the political roundtable. So it yes. is good to put all the the don't and do's, the do's and don'ts on the table, so that we oh, can okay. move forward perfectly. Indeed, mm -hmm. so that we can move, move forward and um, everybody in Edo State that is of the uh, APC family, uh, the APC Democratic family, uh, should, as it were, you know, line up behind uh, the pair of uh, Monde Okwebolo and uh, Dennis Idahosa. That is the ultimate. It's only if there was any danger that there might be some untoward uh, happenings, uh, then I would thought 
I would have thought that. But surely you yourself don't see that. But you have made the observation that why were certain elders, very, very important people, not part of that? I, I don't know unless you want to prefer a reason. Because the quality, nobody's complaining no. about the quality. Or is it about, the, is it about the, the, the region that he comes from? That is why, you know, uh, I was surprised that we've concluded. And when the news bro uh, broke out, so some of us went to town and there were some observations here and there. So that is the observation I'm trying to make. I'm All right. not averse to the emergence of uh, Honorable Dennis Idausa as a, uh, the running mate to Senator Mode Opuebulo. So okay. we have gone beyond that stage now, is to look at the bigger picture. Interparty inter matter is done, is, uh, is, uh, 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 is uh, concluded. Now we are now looking at interparty affairs. Okay, inter, interparty affairs. That's what we should, I mean, yeah. as you said, we now need to look forward. And uh, surely Definitely. That's, going to be, that's going to be about planning and strategizing uh, to win the election. Uh, for APC, just as other parties are going to be doing exactly the same thing, they're going to be planning and striving uh, to snatch it from uh, the APC. You, you are correct. You know that uh, so you don't... the PDP, the, the PDP have also had their own uh, running mate in person of uh, uh, Ogi the SSG to the state government as a running mate to Aswe Iwudaru from uh, Ikpopaka Igor constituency, one of the biggest and largest uh, constituency when you talk of uh, voters' demography. That was one some of the concerns some of us were expressing that maybe the leadership of the party in APC would have looked at that di di dimension. So however, okay. now that they have taken their decision, so we have PDP to contend with vis-a-vis -vis the Labour Party. And uh, there are other uh, parties that are also having their candidate and running mate, like the ADC, that has uh, one Paul uh, uh, Obazele, and of course the Accord Party, Iyere. The National Rescue Movement is also there with uh, Dr. Denis Osaho. We are good to yeah. go. The course is clear. Okay, the course is clear because something you said, you said that now that the APC, referring to your party, now that the APC, uh, now that they, they've taken their decision, and those were your words, you didn't say now that we've taken our decision. You said now that they've taken their decision. Well, there are these other issues. So when you look at it from that point of view, that's why I'm, I'm saying that is there a niggling doubt somewhere? You, 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 you used advisedly the words, now that they've taken their decision. Referring to your own party. Uh, you are trying to be political with your question. However, I was not in that meeting. <laughs> and many people that are supposed to be in that meeting were not, not in that meeting. Okay. Uh, as a loyal party and committed party supremo, I have no alternative. Uh, because I don't want to discuss all the gabadoism or the parako that led to that. But <laughs> party supremacy, they are taking decisions. I have to abide. Because I don't want you to put me in the, in the ATR box the way you did the other day. So I'm very, very circumspect with uh, the way I, I respond sorry. to no, your no question. Intention. I just noted because you are an experienced politician yourself, and um, so I just it, it just jumped out at me, and I'm perhaps to a lot of uh, perhaps to a number of our viewers as well. But now, let, let, let jokes apart. <clears throat> Look, we now have for the APC Dennis, I mean uh, uh, Monday of Pueblo, Senator Monday of Pueblo, and Dennis uh, Representative Dennis uh, Idahosa. That brings together which which what strengths does that bring together? Never mind whatever you might have preferred. As a party man, party supremacy, we're looking forward now. What are the strengths that this team uh, does bring on board that might have led the party elders, or whoever they were, in you know, going with Dennis uh, Idahosa to, to, uh, to run with Monday of Webolo? What are the strengths? Uh, it's often said in a local parlance that what the elders will see while seated 
the young uh, brat will climb uh, an Iruko tree and it will be difficult for, for him to sight what the elders are extreme while seated Sitting down. in their comfort. Yes. Um, I think uh, the uh, Modu Pueblo and uh, Dennis Idaosa coming together, I think it's a, it's a good pairing. Because one, mark you, they are, they are both are sitting honorable members. That's right. They are, they are tested, they are tested the political terrain. They understand the game. They are exposed. They are highly experienced. So these two political juggernaut coming together, I think <laughs> they are going to give a good fight and they give PDP a good run for their money. What are the areas of representation? I think Edo, uh, Edo Central, uh, when it comes to that, where, where do they represent? Where were they chosen from? Uh, Modo Paolo was chosen from Edo Central, a serving senator. And of course, Honorable Dennis Idaosa was picked from a, 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 via, a via federal constituency from Edo South. You can see that the pairing is, uh, is, is watertight like Olumu Rock. <laughs> the Olumu Rock is in my town. So, <laughs> but I'm happy that okay. you used my okay. it was it was it was, del it was deliberately used because I know you are from there. <laughs> well, I just wanted to thank you, Comrade Bello or Saratin. I when I when I was told that um, I'll be on air with you, I was delighted about the fact. Say, okay, let me see what uh, the comrade is going to have to say this time. <laughs> and uh, but you have said it yeah. that look. Whereas you, you know, you, uh, you know, you, you, you go along with it uh, because you, you always hamper on democracy. Um, there are some things that next time around you would hope that your party might take into consideration, and you've mentioned those things. But at the same time, you say that between the central and I think it is the south, you've got it pretty much sewn up. A lot more work now has to be done, and uh, I'm sure you're going to be getting your shoulder to the wheel yourself, along with other uh, patrons within your party, to make sure that this is the winning team. Surely you're going to give it I, your all. I have, I, I have no option. I have no option. I am a, I'm a pure APC chieftain. It is the responsibility of people like us that believe in a party under the leadership of our dear president, uh, Senator uh, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, who is a father, a, a pater familiar Omiya, who is carrying everybody along. So people like us must follow the direction of the party to ensure that we deliver APC come September 21st, 2024. I guarantee you that because we have a good product to take to the market space. Mm. And of course, you know that the PDP is going to want to remain in power. It, is, it goes without saying. And that's the, that, that will be what they are working on around the clock. I just thought I'd say that. But it's, that it's not as if... Uh, I'm sure you're not considering it a walkover. Uh, that, 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 definitely. I told you that Senator Modo Pueblo has been tried, tested, and, trust, and, uh, uh, and trusted. He's exposed to the political dynamics. He's experienced in the game. He has, he has, he has, he has uh, conformed himself to the political dynamics of Edo State. The, uh, the, the, his counterpart has not been tested. He's a political rookie and a political neophyte in the game. But Modo Pueblo, a, a with his tag team, uh, Honorable Dennis uh, Idaosa, my brother, the defense is going to be as solid as that of uh, Imale Kunde of Cameroon. I guarantee you. Though I, will not, I don't want to make the, 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 the process to look very uh, cheap because we are not underestimating any contender that is going to confront us in the game. According to oh. Aristotle, uh, Aristotle, uh, Aristotle, that politics is a war without bloodshed. Indeed. But war 
is politics with bloodshed. We're going to have to leave it there, Comrade uh, Bello Osarechi. Uh, the breaking news, as you said, uh, you know, last night it was uh, announced that um, APC had decided on Daniel Idahosa uh, of the House of Representatives to pair with uh, Monday Okpobolo uh, when it comes to the governorship election in Edo State uh, at the polls. So thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Comrade uh, Bello Osaretin. We're going to have to leave it there. Do join thank us you, tomorrow, please, for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folari. Bye-bye for now. I'm going out. Stay ahead with the biggest news stories. Go beyond the news headlines. Experience impactful investigations. Enjoy resourceful news coverage in real time. TVC News at 7 and TVC News at 10 p.m. Live every day on this channel. TVC News. First with breaking news. Every week, Green Angle, in partnership with Wild Aid, will bring you a documentary series on environmental issues affecting Nigeria's amazing biodiversity, from climate change, air pollution, and wildlife conservation. We will be traveling across Nigeria to give you on the ground report of the issues affecting our environment. It airs every Saturday at 4.30 p.m., only on TVC News. Information is power. Information is security. Information is knowledge. On Labor Lens, we believe that working people around the world have real questions of their own. They want to know how the world of work operates, what it means to the employer of labor, how policies affect workers in the workplace. On Labor Lens, I am sure we engage effectively the organized labor, organized private sector, and governments to get out of them information workers are in need of. I am Sharon Jackson, asking questions that make you get sense of the workplace. Every weekday on Business Nigeria, we uncover the secrets of the financial.